Hi, I am Dr. Tina Vaghis from PIDC. So after the hand scaling video, today I am here to discuss on root planing. So as you know, scaling and root planing are the two fundamental procedures in uh, perinatal therapy. Sometimes scaling alone won't be enough to take care of your dental tissues. So removing the dental deposits from the root surfaces would facilitate to remove all the bacteria that could provoke gingival inflammation. So that is this root planing, that is a procedure by which residued embryo calculus will be removed from the root surfaces. So you might be thinking, what is this cure attach? Is it different from root planing? And what is this root debridement? Is it same as that of root planing? Here it comes. So coming to the pathway from cure attach to root planing and finally to the root debridement. So the previous school of thought was that the removal of pocket lining would facilitate proper periodontal healing. So that is the term cure attach aimed at removing the pocket lining inside the pocket. So this was basically achieved by applying pressure outside the pocket with the finger while performing the upstro uh, upward stroke with the curate inside the pocket. So during this process, procedure, actually the root surface, the inner blade will be removing the deposits from the root surfaces as well. So finally root planing will be achieved by this. That is why later the term cure attach was replaced by root planing. So that is the procedure by which residual embryo calculus and necrotic cement will be removed to produce a smooth, hard, clean surface. So basically some amount of cement will be removed in this procedure. So later on the further studies they proved that proper periodontal healing won't be there if the cement is removed. So that is why the root debridement came into account in 2011 describing that removal of root deposits without deliberate removal of cement. So this can be achieved by light pull stroke using manual curates and ultrasonic instruments. So that is the rule of five Hope you understand. Coming to the instruments part, curate is the instrument of choice for root cleaning due to its design and tactile sensitivity. As you know, subgingival calculus is more, more harder than supragingival calculus and is often getting locked to root irregularities and making it more tenacious and more difficult to remove. So that is why this uh, curates make an important part in the removal of subgingival calculus. And you know that uh, curates, it is the, uh, the cross section is different from that of the scalars. Scalars will be in triangular in cross section with pointed tip, whereas curate is of spoon shape and the tip will be very blunt. Details of curates, uh, we are using here Hufredi curates. We have universal type of curates and Gracie type of curates. Universal curates, we have 2R2L and 4R4L. 2R2L for anteriors and 4R4L non for posteriors. And coming to the Gracie curates, we have different types known for different areas that is 1, 2, 3, 4 for anteriors, 5, 6 for anteriors and premolars. And we have 7, 8, 9, 10 that is for facial and lingual surfaces of molars. So coming to 11, 12 for mesial side of molars and 13, 14 for distal side of molars. So 15, 16 is the extension for the mesial side and 17, 18 is the extension for uh, distal side. Uh, more than that, we have several modifications like Langer curates, extended five curates, uh, mini five curates, Gracie curates, etc. It has got the cutting edges, both cutting edges for universal curate and it is attached by a blunt end. So there is a rounded tip and it has got the back surface that is a downward part and has got a face of the blade and it has got the lateral surfaces that is where the two cutting edges are. So you can see that so this is the parts of a curet. Okay, the parts of a universal curet. So as I told it has got two cutting edges, it is a universal type, it can be used in any of the areas and it has got two cutting edges and you can see that it, uh, the blade angle to the, uh, to, the sh to the shank it will be 90 degree, that is to the terminal shank to the blade is 90 degree and it is curved in only one plane that is back to front, it is not to the sidewise planes. So there is a peculiarity of universal curate. So coming to the Gracie curates area specific curates, it has got one outer cutting edge 
you can see that there is outer cutting edge it has got only one cutting edge and it is specifically made to each area so that is it is area specific curates and you can see that it is curved in two planes that is both towards sidewise and also back and forth so it has got two two uh, curvatures and it has got only one cutting edge okay there is this is the outer cutting edge and coming to the blade angle that is the angle between the blade and the terminal shank it will be 60 degree so that is why it is called as offset blade angle so it is angulated in a way of 60 degree okay so that is the peculiarity of grazy curates So coming to the procedure, the first step is anesthesia. That is, depending on the patient's tolerance level, you can just uh, go for local anesthesia. And it's always uh, better to go for anesthesia if the patient demands that his patient will be more comfortable, and so that the the procedure will be less fatiguing for the clinician and also the outcome will be improved. So when the patient is ready to go with the treatment, you can go for pedonal probing. So probing should be thoroughly done for subgingival calculus, root surface concavities, percussion involvements and probing pocket depth. As you know this is subgingival calculus and the tip of the instrument during the procedure make this one of the most demanding ta tasks for the dentist. So always we, re we rely on tactile sensitivity. The instrument should be stabilized with a modified pen grasp with appropriate finger rest. And you can see that this lower shank should be parallel to the long axis of the tool. So the instrument should be closely adapted to the root surface. You can see that the place, the tip, uh, third or half of the cutting edge of the grassy curet against the tooth surface. You can see the larger cutting, cutting area, that is the cutting edge, should be inserted at zero degree. So to the apical point, you can see that so then an angle of 60 to 80 degrees should be established for root planing by the curate phase and the root surface. So you can go for the stroke length that is a root planing stroke extend from base of the pocket to the crown level to the CJ. So this activation will be done with a 60 to 80 degree angulation. So without withdrawing the instrument, the lower third of the blade advance laterally, should be advanced laterally and be positioned to engage the next portion. So the activation, usually uh, the wrist for our motion is the fundamental means of activation, usually 20 strokes needed for each area. So depending upon the thickness of the calculus, it varies from moderate to light full stroke and usually vertical and oblique strokes are most effective strokes for so you can see that the calculus, the subgingival calculus has been removed with light strokes, light pull strokes. Okay. So going to the posterior area, we are using 7, 8 and 9, 10 for molars buccal and lingual surfaces so now I'm doing the buccal surfaces okay with 7 8 So then I am taking the 11, 12 for mesial surfaces of molars. You can see that it's been inserted 0 degree and it's well adapted to the tooth surface and the lower shank is parallel to the long axis of the tooth and with 60 to 80 degree angulation the root planing stroke has been established.
same way with 1314 they secure it and using it for the distal surface so with zero degree angulation always you have to see for the cutting edge outer cutting edge while insertion zero degree and 60 to 80 degree angulation has been established to remove the subgingival cavities always tactile sensitivity helps you to instrument the area so then the debris, debris, debris should be wide with cotton So after debridement of each area, the area should be irrigated with uh, proper antiseptic solution. So here we are usually using povidone solution, being a bactericidal effect against most of the bacteria involving the peripatetic periodontal pathogens we are using here. So this is the way we are irrigating. So it will be irrigated to the periodontal pocket depth. So so after the removal, after the irrigation, you have to do probing again to see for any irregularities or roughness on the root surfaces. So if there is any thick calculus that should be removed after manual scaling, you have to go for ultrasonic scaling for it. Okay. Hope you had a better understanding with root cleaning and root debridement as well. Um, so that's all for today. Thank you and have a nice day.